Well, all right, we're going to say you have another meeting. In progress. Oh, are you clicking on the 530 or the six? You know what? Uh, we have seven people in the waiting room. Oh, okay, I'm clicking on the wrong link. For sure. When did you see that? Send it. <laughs> see what? I mean, I got. <laughs> that make for an interesting meeting. <laughs> Sir, hello. What What are you seeing? Uh, Lisa. Connected. Connected. Yep. Then why don't I see you? Oh, there you are. Yeah. Hi, Jonathan. How are you? Hello. How's it going? Hi, Peter. Peter. Yeah. Hi, Peter. Peter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so, so now, um, Lisa, how how do I? I'm going to admit all these people, but how do I um, make you host? <laughs> So just go to you. I just admitted you, so there you are. And then go to more. Um, uh oh, he did it too far. Hit that one for and um, make co hosts. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm going to admit that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Is that feedback from you? Okay, I'm going to. What's that? Is that on my end? <laughs> well, should I admit these people and see what's going on with you? But if I, oh, I'm Lisa, or you? I'm Lisa. Okay, then it's me. Hi, Peter. Hello, everybody. One more.
I can't hear anything. Peter, I think you're muted. muted. Okay, now I hear. Still muted, Peter. Am I muted now? No. Am I muted now? No, nope, we can hear you. <laughs> okay, so we're not getting. You don't have to raise your voice. Yeah, okay. And, and I think also we may have to identify ourselves because people are seeing. Um, Rather, no, I'm trying not to. I'm, that's the reason why I want Lisa to control this from her iPad is so I can think uh, and uh, not get lost in something I don't have to do anyways, which is how to operate Zoom. Um, so just for this, the, the, uh, for the people online, um, what uh, Peter and I have proposed is four groups to work on this. And then I, what I have proposed is uh, uh, members of this committee to work those issues. The first would be a group to, to get us ready to organize a set of charrettes or and community meetings, but not just uh, a meeting to shoot the breeze, but one that uh, provides um, some conceptual drawings of a range of possibilities for what development at the community center library and perhaps on adjacent sites as well might look like. Um, we would, as a committee work on what that range should look like. Um, but that the idea here is that to talk about these issues with something in front of us. So we, we're, we're talking about something practical uh, when, when, we, uh, when we ask the community to discuss what they want, what they need, what they're willing to support, what they might be convinced to support. So that's one working group. The second working group um, would work on a community survey to try to gauge these same issues. This the, our predecessor commission did a, uh, an amazing job at survey work uh, leading up to the uh, comprehensive plan um, report from 2019 and, um, and did surveys on this very issue, at least at, with regard to the community center previously. And we need to build on that, uh, uh, that work. Uh, but um, uh, the idea here was we would put together a survey uh, and field it. In both these efforts, um, what I'm proposing is that uh, these are special skills. Uh, and I hope that I can convince the, this committee and the commission and the community to go out and get specialized help. Um, there are groups um, such as Link Strategic Partners that have done work for the city and almost did work for us uh, during the small area plan, but it, it, uh, the idea of big meetings fell apart, at least in part on uh, because of COVID. Um, but these are people who are uh, extraordinarily talented both at meeting facilitation. Uh, and I know that because we had a lot of very, a group of commissioners and Link had a lot of very heated meetings in which, to my amazement, the facilitator at Link kept saying, so what you were saying is X, what you were saying, it was a very, it was, it, he managed to keep us on track in a meeting that um, could have gone off track. The other thing that they're very skilled at, and I think there are others as well, uh, uh, is gauging community sentiment. And so um, I hope in both these, uh, with both of these working groups that we are able to uh, tap um, the resources of, of some professionals as well. And then two other working groups, one uh, bearing down on the financing, like what, it, with regard to the public institutions, the community center and library, what's in the, the, the city's capital budgets now? How's that compare with what the two agencies think they need on what, uh, 
building costs and uh, our, our, our life. So we need to know about the financing of the public institutions on, on the site or on adjacent sites. And, and then the same uh, effort with regard to um, the financing of affordable housing. Um, uh, and, and finally, a, a, a resources group, and I think that resources uh, applies to a lot of things. Um, a, a, a group that would work on fundraising, if it can be done in the community to pay for part of this. Um, uh, I broached this with Robert Gordon, who's in attendance and is the president of the Chevy Chase Community Association. And he suggests there's a possibility they might contribute. I, I think there are people me, for example, um, who would be happy to contribute out of pocket if we could do this and do this right. So there's that sort of resource. There's negotiating with Link. And finally, one of the things that you heard talked about here and, uh, and at the commission and that you heard council member Fruman talk about is the possibility of, instead of just focusing on the community center and library, seeing if there's an interest on the part of Wells Fargo or the owners of the Wells Fargo land to jointly develop both parcels. This would have the benefit of lifting some of the intensity that is now focused on just the community center library site. Uh, and also building a, 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 a second side to our main street, uh, which doesn't quite have one right now. Um, it, would, it could mean lower buildings and one therefore that would uh, gain more public support uh, and so but but it could be just a shimmer on. it could be that uh, that this is something that Wells Fargo has nodded about but is not uh, actually willing to do anyways for those are the folks uh, online th those are the four groups now I you know you guys uh, I've, I've I've been assigned you tasks but what do you what do you think of the both the tasks themselves and uh, the break up of the you know uh, the breakdown of the the tasks and the assignments. Yeah. Um, Ron, Ron, just so the folks online, this, so this is Ron Eichmann. This is Ron Eichmann. A um, couple of comments. Uh, I think that as a general framework, as a starting point, I, I read this memo several times today, it, it you know, seems fine. Uh, I, I think it needs polishing though, and made more real. Uh, and I'm fine with. My assignment uh, on this with Jamie and uh, Peter and somebody I don't know. I guess you. But what I would suggest to to that group is that our first order of business is to get together and look at what you perceive as the scope of services, if you will, for that group, and get back to the whole group. Uh, on whether we think that's realistic, how it might be done, uh, what it might cost. Because uh, I would add to some of your assumptions here that architects, in my experience, are very, 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 very seldom do they do pro bono work, especially pro bono work for rich people. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, so I think that that's a little, you know, that needs to be fleshed out. Yeah. Hold on one second. One. So Mara, I'm, yeah, I'm not relegating you, but we just have so many seats here. So there's, 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 there's a whole lot of seats. Yeah. Um, um, uh, you know, because this is an extraordinarily complex project uh, with all the programs and everything that are not really down yet. And, you know, if we're going to get somebody pro bono, it's got to be somebody who's good, somebody who, who has experience. Uh, we don't want to get into a, you know, you get what you pay for sort of situation. Yeah, yeah. So, so what I would suggest for that group is that we get together which next week, we do a little uh, 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 brainstorming among ourselves and get back and say, well, this is what we think okay. makes sense. Can I just, the one thing I, though, I think we want to set as the low bar for this enterprise, you, your working group's enterprise, is the charrettes such as they were during the small area plan. I think even those of us who are more positively inclined towards the small area plan than others thought that the drawing 
phase when, when we got to look at something that would give people an idea of what, I mean, in fact, Ward 3 Vision, which you're part of, did a better job of suggesting what things would look like than the Office of Planning did. And so, so I just- high standards we bring to this discussion. The high standards we bring that. So, <laughs> and, you know, uh, but, but I think that, uh, that that's, we ought to see as a, as a, a low bar um, for, it, because we, you, we really didn't have anything to go on. Very little. Yeah, I would just have a couple of comments following from from Ron's just on on the scope. I, I I'm happy to be in this group. Um, of course, um, you know the charrette process is um, uh, the, the visioning process is an interesting one. It may not be that the catalyst is presenting people or the public with, with the actual solutions, um, but creating a kit of parts that can be discussed and moved around and, and thought about and frozen at certain stages as a point of discussion. So I think we can talk about the components of the an effective Yeah, yeah, how you, how you go about organizing that. But I think the four areas survey obviously is absolutely critical um, and ensuring that that survey reaches into every corner obviously is, is critical that we're in the, there's transparency and, and all that. So anyway, um, we can talk about the structure and scoping of this charrette process, I think, in some detail. Well, Jamie, it sounds like you're talking about process. I just wonder, the other thing that that is implicit in that is that we give people however we do it whatever the process way is that but that we give a range of we don't just go nothing you know hundreds of units of affordable housing you know i mean yeah. like, like we got to give people a range to, to, to uh, and uh, again I, yeah. I i mean i defer to you guys about how you do that but yeah. we're going to have to agree on just at this stage, what conceptually, what sure. kind of, what kind of the, you know, what, what are the elements of the of the dialogue from a from a practical and programmatic standpoint? Right. So others. Yeah, I, I just was wondering about something because Peter, I think you mentioned this last week also. Um, <coughs> I'm Jim Feldman. This is Jim Feldman. Yeah, he's a member of the Um. You, you talk about the Welsh, I think it's fine to look at the community, at the Civic Corps lot along with the Welsh Fargo. I don't know whether to say, who knows whether that has any reality to it in terms of what they're a property owner, whether they're interested or what. But why are we not also looking at Safeway and the gas station? I say, yes. It seems like all of those, yes. it's really one. Thank you for saying that. Yes. I, 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 look, look, the only reason I can see is that th there have been some initial conversations uh, with Wells Fargo and there's at least goodwill. <laughs> and the, the problem with the Safeway site, which I think is a serious problem for this community, uh, is that, yeah, well, Randy probably knows yeah, more no, about yeah. I, I do know more, and it's recent information. Yeah. Okay. It changes what our perception is of this is. Like, number one, I talked to Matt Fruman, and Matt said that he had, had a conversation with the mayor, and the mayor was very interested in the Safeway lot. Great. That's... At, and development of that property. Then I did a little bit of research and I looked at the tax uh, records for that property. And it appears that at least in 2013, the whole lot was consolidated to the sale and Safeway or a subsidiary of Safeway or parent of Safeway, someone related to Safeway, now owns the whole thing. And Ooh, that's that would help a lot. That, I mean, <laughs> wasn't there ground mason? Yeah. Well, yeah. it says now, and this is I'm looking at, at the property tax records, and it says that the whole thing is owned by a an LLC. It's called 5545 Circle LSC, LLC, and it is a it, it, it's a subsidiary of, of Safeway essentially. Well, look. Let me just say to the broader question, I mean, we can't straighten this out right now, but the broader question, it, it's, I, I'm not trying to restrict this to, to, uh, um, to, to, to just uh, Wells Fargo. I mean, 
I, I think that I think that many people in this community have a concern that we're trying to do too much in, in too little space. And that I, I mean, I, I think it's worth exploring whether we can do what we want to do, but spread it out among uh, among uh, a, a bunch of parcels along. Um, so. I mean, I would only comment that you know Wells Fargo has Susan probably knows about this a billion and a half dollar commitment of some sort to support affordable housing in the district and focused on Ward Seven and Eight, mm. uh, and that's there. But recognize that if you go to them. You were saying, Wells Fargo, will you give us money so we can build less affordable housing rather than more in our privileged neighborhood? That would be the ask. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, not, how is that the ask? Because you want to take uh, affordable housing from the civic center and put it over there. So the the in the end, and you're and you don't want to build up there. You don't want to build up there. You know, in the end, they're going to look at. And, it's a choice between the two and, and make well and wonder I, 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 what so, they're supporting. I, I, let, let, let's put another framing on it. Um, uh, trying to find an area where this community will agree to support changes on its main street <laughs> is is a is a is an important element in getting something done. Um, uh, and it, it if, if it is a clash of of uh, Abstract plans that you know that some groups think are good and some groups think are bad. That's you know that's that doesn't get you the affordable housing. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. I, I I'm just saying about talking with Wells Fargo. Hypothetically, though, if if you could go to Wells Fargo and say, okay, we were planning, we were hoping to get 100 units at the community center library site. Uh, with your help, we think we could get 150 by using both sites. That's fine. And that's um, what unless I, they look at their site and say well, we're two hundred on our site. Well, that you know, so no, that's, that's the kind of thing I think that's uh, yeah, about. that's what it, it's in the aggregate and we get more. I'm just talking. Oh, yes. Is that what it is? Too? I'm yeah. just talking yeah. about how do you frame the the discussion with Wells Fargo because right. they want more affordable housing, right. not right. less. Well, if somebody asks you to get in, can you let? Can you see that person and let them in? Um, she should, um, Lisa should have control over this. We're trying not to have. I didn't know what that ding was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, look, uh, I, I, um, I, I, we can't negotiate this now, um, but I think that this speaks to the issue of um, having a range of proposals and having understanding what outside parties, Wells Fargo, Safeway, you know, what their constraints and their interests are. So, um, um, so that's a. That's uh, where we are, I think, on that. Um, Can I just ask a yes. question? Just and I appreciate you letting me listen in over here. But just so that I, because I, because you're using different language and you all have been meeting, and I just want to know when you use certain phrases, like when you talk about affordable housing and you say building 100 units affordable housing, do you mean building 100 units and those 100 units are affordable housing, or do you mean Building 100 units and some are affordable housing, Very or do you much. mean building 200 units, all 100 or affordable? I was, I was, I was so saying that would help. All, this, all affordable. Every single one of them. Right. And then, but do you mean building then 100 affordable housing and additional market rate housing on top of that? Because no. that impacts Not the density question. Not at that site. Okay. So you're talking about like when you go to Wells Fargo, you go anywhere else. For all of this, you're talking just affordable housing, not. 100 affordable, but now we have to add extra stories yeah. for market yeah. rate housing. Mara, and, and, and this is because that would help, so I, I, it might help, but it's also it's got to be a load of reality testing here. Because I mean, one of the things mm -hmm. that uh, I think that we have to be realistic about is that if the city, for example, is going to fund the public sites but is not going to fund parking then a, a developer is going to end up with stuff dumped on them and they're going to start saying. Wait a second, you want us to subsidize affordable housing and you want us to pay for underground parking. And by the way, there's nothing that Demcat has mentioned so far about open open space. So you're gonna have me pay for open space. I mean, then what you end up with is somebody saying, Oh, well, I gotta have a ton of market rate to get uh, whether it's 10 or 20 or 30 or a hundred affordable units. And uh, but this is this is stuff that we're just gonna have to sort out going forward. I think that. The, the, the number 100 that you have heard rooted about here is a Ward 3 Visions, uh, Coalition for Smarter Growth, 
um, uh, concept. concept. Uh, and I think what you're hearing is that they're talking about 100 affordable. Yeah, we think we think 100 affordable. I, I mean, but without luxury housing or market rate housing mixed in on top room, of it, yeah, we don't think there's just 100 yeah. affordable. Yeah, okay, yeah. I, I, um, I think as far as Wells Fargo is concerned in this discussion, it's the first time it's ever been discussed. So uh, you know, I, I don't think anybody can say that. Yeah, that any, anybody's looking at Wells Fargo for a specific program. Well, and, and to your point, that would be also a good reason why. There should be an interest in looking at actually public development where there can be public development instead of private developers because they have a profit motive and then they have to build more and do more to satisfy the profits as opposed to public interest. Okay, let me be sure. I mean, I, again, I, th there are immense numbers of complexities between e even you know getting us started in this in this effort to this, to push a a decent community process. Um, the I the general idea of charrettes. That, pro that provide a range of proposals um, uh, of size of whether a single lot community center library or, or, uh, or multiple lots, whether they're another lot, two lots, three lots, you know, uh, this is uh, th basically, this seems like a reasonable thing to do. Is that right? Yeah. And, and you guys are going to take this on. Yeah. Okay. As long as you're not absolutely casting concrete on what you just said. Was it made? No, because I'm, I'm all, not casting no, concrete all, on anything. All, all, all of those, yeah, they move around. Know, yeah, all, all oh, of those yeah. variations, yeah. And, and you know, yeah, yeah. you're talking about asking somebody to do a hundred thousand dollars worth of work if they do everything you want, okay? And that's not going to happen. It, it it depends on what this process actually well, is. I think, I think after we, have we to, talk and come back to you, we, I think we, we have to have the sort of more detail. We can figure something out. We can we can figure out what that you know, process can, actually is. Can I just make, make a suggestion? Because I think what Peter outlined was a concept of how to go about things. Where are you going to end up with that? I mean, it's maybe it's not going to be practical to do that, or maybe it will be. I I I I I go into this. This is not a firm, you know. This yeah, is right. not a firm. This process. is just a concept of where to head and see to explore. It's for that's what a task force is about to do. Yeah. And I just would also say that, you know, I don't think the number 100 is, I, I don't think we should start saying, well, we only want 100 or we want at least 100 or we want more than 100. It's like, we should see what, what we can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I hope that, um, um, well, let, so let, let me let me just stop that there and turn to survey. Um, um, I, I know that we have done these two good surveys. The, 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 our predecessors have done these two good surveys, one or two center and one on basically a development in, in the Connecticut Avenue, the upper Connecticut Avenue corridor. So, um, I, I think there's still, um, I think there's still a, 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 a lot to ask the community about in this regard, because if I understand it, Mandy, the community center survey was done at a time when we were thinking about either renovating or replacing a single building. Yeah, and so this is a substantially the idea of a multi-purpose building or buildings uh, across one or more sites is a it's a different kettle of fish. Um, um, what do people think about uh, um, either the, such a survey? Can I ask one question? Please? Yeah, uh, you, you mentioned that you hadn't heard back from Demped. Has anybody reached out to Demped? I've said, been talking to Demped. Okay, yeah. you know what? The status of their survey is yes they um received our feedback the amc's mm -hmm. feedback probably last week and we did sim submit that a little late to them later than they wanted to um and the one thing that gill said um is that his staff is going through those comments so we got comments also from jerry mallet's um, and some of the commissioners that took the survey and looked at it, they are making changes to it. So that has delayed their timetable a bit, which I was grateful that they are putting in some of our feedback. Um, they, there is one section and I can't remember, I'll look at my notes and I'll tell you before I leave, um, that they were really pleased with the comments and feedback from the ANC. There are some things in there that they hadn't thought about and they were redesigning the survey to kind of meet some of those um, specifications. 
I asked them uh, before they released the survey or asked Gills, Gills, <laughs> before he really, yeah, I have to get that name right, before he releases it to come back before the ASC so he can come back to the community and explain the survey because their survey is very different than ours is going to be. Theirs is a very high level, you know, for the RFP, not the nitty gritty that, you know, our community is looking for. So we've had quite a few conversations about making sure the community understands the scope of Den Pet survey. And he said he would do that. Are they so, only the library and DP Department of Recreation into their survey? It's all, it's all there. So this yeah. is the library and yeah community outreach as well yes okay both agencies have been rolled into that survey and just to let you guys know both agencies supplied that portion of the survey pretty much yeah they had you know feedback substantial feedback and development of those sections that was the library so they seem to be they seem to be very interested in yeah but remember in, what when we did the walkthrough of west end what she was saying about, you know, the high level pretty much on um, performance space. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's still not, you know, it doesn't go into programming and things like that. It's still very high level. Lisa, how has the timetable changed? Now that I can't get out of jail. <laughs> well, I don't think they really know. I don't really think they really key. know. Yeah, he, he said they're not close to the RFP um, and the survey is the first next thing that they need to get out. Um, so we talked about that because I'm very interested to know where we are going to end up in terms of timeline with the council vote. Um, we have to really keep our eye on that ball. And he just didn't have an answer for it. I don't think they know. So on that question, where do things stand with the rezoning? And where do things stand with the impact? Because this could all be, you know, we could be putting a lot of work here and, you know, unless then that acknowledges that yes, we're going to listen to the community and we want to hear from you. Then we're going to do some further discussion to try to incorporate everything. We'll be back where we were with the council and the comp plan changes and the small area plan. So let, let me say two things. One is that my hope with this is that we, with the effort that we're talking about here, these working groups pushing forward with Tourette, pushing forward with our own community uh, uh, funded and uh, designed survey. Um, we are we are starting to set the pace for this whole thing, and that eventually, I know I'm dreaming, but eventually, Dempet and the, the and the mayor will join us instead of trying to They'll just fall yeah. so, yes. so, so I just that's the that is kind of tactically, I think the the, 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 aim, the, aim, the aim here, right? Um, uh, well, they they do. I mean, so I've talked with Jill's quite a bit, um, definitely every week. Um, and had a brief discussion with Falchikio. They want to work with us. And they were, Jill's words in terms of our resolution, he was disappointed that we voted no. Um, but I've made it That's very clear. Yeah, <laughs> I've made it very clear why that no vote was and why we could not get to yes and what the block roadblocks were. I think in talking to Jill's, he wants to work with us but, um, you know, I do think he is struggling with what that looks like. But I, I think they all know that there is, um, you know, concern within the community and um, it's in their best interest to, to work with us to get some resolution to some of these issues. So I think, you know, based on the process that Peter has provided our resolution and we're gonna be sending up a follow-up letter, you know, this week to them moving forward with our process, they will work with us. Um, and I've asked Jill's to do things like, um, and I've talked to Peter and I'll talk to the group later about just um, outside of ANC meetings, just um, like Council Member Lewis George had a listening session at Lafayette Point of Rec, beautiful recreation center. You know, Jill's will you come out and just, you know, talk to the community just off the record, you know, just not at a formal ANC meeting, just to talk to people. And hear the process. So he was he's willing to do things like that. This is more substantial engagement, but you know, I think they'll work with us. I think so, Jonathan, with regard to just I'm sorry, just with regard to the zoning district. The, the, there is a new zoning district for Upper Connecticut Avenue being designed. I suspect uh, the Office of Planning Zoning staff will roll that out again. 
six weeks, a month, six weeks, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, it will, um, you know, there will be a whole bunch of issues we're going to have to consider around that. But I guess uh, if, if we can move a process forward that talks about um, looking at this from the point of view of the community to a process that the community has the reins on or substantial reins on, then um, maybe by the time that comes out or maybe after much hullabaloo after it comes out, we will be able to be able to, we won't be driven by whatever the, the, the maximums in the zoning are. Um, we'll be driven by a community city joint process trying to find uh, common ground to, to make changes, but make changes that, the, that a substantial part of the community can support. And so I think that's the aim. Does oh, the can I just see the, or the community have any say in the zoning that because they're rolling out? I mean, uh, you know, there, there's a... Or do we just accept it? I mean, do you have yeah, a I don't, to look, oppose it or do you know what it is? I, you know, there's, there's some formal process when they move it over to the zoning commission and the zoning commission puts it down for a hearing and then we have a comment period and that yeah well there'll be a process there but I, there's you know, nothing before that no we we met with them some uh, to ask questions uh, last fall uh but uh it, it, you know there's uh, you know we were in no position to say you know we're talking about stuff like well the the, the small air plant talks about step Downs, uh, step backs, you know, when you're going down to a residential community, what do you got? What are you thinking about? You know, um, does this apply, you know, to property, you know, behind PNC or behind Magruder's? And what, you know, so there have been, I mean, we've asked questions, but we, you know, they're driving, that's a process that's in their their core right now. And so, but it speaks to the wisdom of going to surface is because the zoning just has to be consistent with the pump plan and the fluid. I mean, new fluid, up fluid. Right. Okay, that that's, was the point uh, let's not get, I mean, again, the these are issues that um, we yeah. are, we're playing on the terrain that we've been given at this stage. So I, well, that, what, just, what, just if I can, just to clarify, the zoning has to be consistent with, with not just the pump plan, but the small area. Right. The small area plan that has been approved. And one of the things that they're doing, which is very relevant to uh, what we're talking about here is there's going to be two zones uh, in, in this neighborhood. And one is everything but the Civic Core, and the other is the Civic Core. So it's going to be its own zone. So you've seen we, what it is that they're proposing? Excuse me? You've seen what they're discussing. I saw it. Oh, can we so, see that? Or how do we see it if you've seen it? Uh, I don't know. I don't have it. Oh, I mean, who so do you, you communicate with to see it? Because this is a zoning group. It would probably be helpful for the community to be able to see what they're doing. Okay. No, no. We can get it to this right now. I okay. brought it to Peter. You know, came to Peter's group. So uh, you have it. I, I have stuff from that last fall. Um, and I, my under, my commitment is to talk to them, talk to them. I think some of the documents couldn't be released yeah. from what I understand. Well, but you've seen them. And, so yeah. they're can not, I, can I just that we know, we, so we know this, this is, you know, some proposal is coming. Right, and, but it would be good for the community to know what the proposal is. Uh, you know, when I- And some parts of the community do know what the proposal is and the rest of us should also know. Uh, okay, I understand what you're saying. Um, uh, um, the other thing I wanted to address before we go any further is with regard to survey. My view, Jerry Malice's view was that the DEMPED survey is weak, so weak that um, both Jerry and I basically said, we can't fix it. So, and it is not, it has nothing to do with affordable housing, it's the two public institutions. So I think that if the, if the, if the question was, well, are we just doing the, you know, doing a job that's already gonna be done, I think the answer is no, uh, in, in, in doing a survey, well, I think the answer is no. What I was thinking is that uh, DEMPEN has said they're going to take care of distribution. So uh, yeah. if we could piggyback on that and say, okay, rather than having two separate surveys have to be sent out separately to everybody, we can have one survey that goes out that may have two parts, the part that Kimpet is interested in and the part that we're particularly interested in. Um, I'm just thinking people are going to get, you know, they'll get confused about which survey is this and why am I filling that? Twice and uh, those kinds of things. So it would be 
desirable that they could be coordinated. Well, uh, I, guess, I guess my reaction to that is, you know, if they're willing to throw in and work with us, that would be grand. But yeah. I mean, at this stage, I don't have a lot of faith that that, this, that we would. That what I think is needed here to really both let people have a say about uh, the what gets developed uh, uh, and and test what is what we can get, build substantial support for. Um, I don't have I don't have faith that the survey DEMPED would do would um, now if, there, if DEMPED wants to throw in with us that's grand I mean you know I mean they got they got money we don't have but I just think that what we ought to be doing right now is thinking about doing a process on our own now um, you know I may be brought up short by costs um, uh, and and other things um, but I I, I I I'd argue to you that uh, we're better at least driving the beginning of this process forward on our own and seeing what whether DEMPED is willing to really engage us fully. I don't know. If it's I, could, I mean, I could reach out to Jill's and I mean, I don't know if they're willing to do that or not. I mean, I could always reach out to him, see what he says. I, I know they don't have a big distribution, um, you know, area for the survey because we talked about that. They're only going to do Connecticut Avenue and the, I guess the area, it's very limited. Yeah, it is. And, and I talked to him about that. So even if we did go in with them um, and from talking to him, I think they are doing primarily um, postcards, not even mailers. So he was talking about basically knocking doors and dropping the survey off um, and said, yeah, yeah, we'll give, you know, if the commissioners want, you know, postcards for their single member district, let me know before we print them and we'll give you extra that you could walk. So it's, yeah, some and issues. What is the, post, the postcard says go online to take the survey. I think it's going to have a QR. Yeah. Did, yeah. You, did we so, get a survey that they sent to you guys so at least we know what questions they were? Posing? I will send you the draft and I will ask Jill. I'm not sending anything that they send me in, in privy to, <laughs> to anybody. I will ask if, if that's okay. okay. That went to the AMC and we sent it back. And I know they're reworking it. I've asked them to bring the rework survey to the community. So that way everybody would get it. So and did I, did I just the survey presuppose surplus? Sorry, I just don't wait. Let's let me come down to this one. Yeah. Um isn't the desk is is the destination for the information contained, the results of the survey, uh, does that go into does that inform the RFP? Yes. Okay, okay. So yes. if that is the case. Then their survey has a certain, let's just use this weird word, authority, right? That 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 survey is presumed to go to That's inform the, the RP. Mm -hmm. Any survey that we come up with isn't necessarily assumed. But the word necessarily to, is important. To, to have that, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I chose the word carefully. Yeah. Um, isn't necessarily assumed to 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 uh, yeah. go directly into the bloodstream I, right. I mean, the rp the rp is absolutely the language of the rp is absolutely critical so mm -hmm. i think it's important that we figure out a way of of framing this survey such that it has some gravitas to it okay, so relative no, to the other can i ask a dumb question how long does it take i've never done this how long does it take to get together uh, the survey that we the questions we would like to ask is that a month-long job? Is that a ten-day job? Well, uh, so I actually was—I was, I was going to. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's—I it's, think it's—I think we're hoping for a lot of the stuff to roll out in. Well, we here we can start. We are—we're playing on a timeline that is that could get thrown off the rails easily by Demhead, either saying they won't work with us or saying we're doing the RFP now or. You know, we're not going to listen yeah, to words. Okay, so that's tomorrow. one. And then the other thing that I think I you say can, about them, yeah, at least um oh. thirty to forty five days. A month to to, to draft to it, draft get it, the review questions, it, talk review about it, it. it, um, sample survey. So we Lafayette, we did not send out a cold survey. We had, um, you know, folks that got it, reviewed it. Uh, how does it, you know, yeah, the but, whole typical but survey a month to get it ready to go. Not not okay. Thirty to forty five days. Okay, so. If we told DEPED, we're going to give you an addendum to your survey in 30 days, and we want you to include that 
in your survey work? What do you think they say? Well, I think we ought to give ourselves more than 30 days because I think one of the things we want to do is we want to bring Link or some group like it on board to help us with this because I, you know, me winging it, you guys winging it, and us running it by Jerry Mallet is, is is sort of you can't just draft Jerry. Um, uh, no. I, I just that's not. I completely agree with you. Just having taken a lot of surveys in my life. If they're not right, they don't give you the information. Mm -hmm. that you need. It's really, really important. And it's it, no one person usually can figure that out when exactly. they're thinking yeah. with their presuppositions. Yeah. And somebody else thinks you've got to, it's, it's just getting the questions right is critical if you want it valuable to solve it. Yep. So, uh, uh, Randy. I had an expert witness at one case where we had to do a survey uh, during the litigation. And I got a guy at American University as an expert witness. And I bet, if I can find his name, uh, he's a statistician, you know, he does this for a living, that's exactly what he does. I think we should get a professional like that to look at. That would be great. And we could probably do that, an AE professor might do it for a moment. Yeah. Uh, Ron, to your question of timing, I think the other, having lived through this with the small air plan, I think the other way we can think about this whole set of things we're talking about <clears> is the outside date for making, you know, for getting stuff and doing things in the public, you know, is is like May. Because I'm a, set aside what Dempet is going to do, I know that by the time we get to Memorial Day, you know, the jig's up on, on holding big public meetings in the summer, and certainly by the time we get to the, the end, the middle of June. And so we ran into this with the small area plan. And so we're not, and all this stuff, and these charrettes, all this stuff, we're not talking about you know, you know, some slow process over many years and da, da, da. we've yeah. got to get this rolled out in a matter of, uh, you know, months. Oh, I, I totally understand that. That's sort of what I was getting at. As much as we can lay stuff off on, on Demped or Bia or whoever, I think we should. But, you know, they all make noise about wanting to be cooperative. You know, so let's call their bluff and say, okay, we're going to give you, you, you want this, we'll give it to you in 30 days or 45 days. But the bluff calling cuts both ways. If they're not prepared to do it, we ought to be able to do it. Sure. That's the only way that we really call their bluff, right? Yeah. Oh, for, for sure. I'm, I'm just saying. How do they work? Not as soon. Find out. Yeah. yeah. We, again, again, so. Between the two surveys, though, like how do the surveys individually, separately have, like what weight do the surveys have? Or what compulsion? I don't think I don't think we can answer that question yet. We don't know. We we we've, we're, 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 we're drifting for? into a, a mysterious process with Demped, and, um, uh, and as Jamie said, the Demped Demped may take, well take their survey and their survey alone as feeding the RFP. But we're also trying. No, to, that is a that is what the survey is for. Right. That right. is a given. It so, is for to feed the RFP. So trying to trying to to uh, bring our survey into that umbrella mm -hmm. may may make some sense on a, on a certain level, but may not be practically achievable. I, I mean, I just said, because in terms of, as you know, like controversially with the SAT, we got hundreds of people to fill out very long surveys and they, their comments were, I mean, it was disregarded and it was wholesale in opposition. To the I, I understand that, but I, I mean- So I doing I, a detailed survey and spending money on it, if the outcome doesn't matter, I'm trying to understand what weight it carries. Well, I guess the whole reason to do it is to give it weight and give it the weight of the commission. I mean, the, I mean, to the extent the commission is not taken seriously in this process, it won't have weight. But if we don't do it, um, we will not have done two things. One, to try to get a community voice through a survey into some, some manner or means the process. Um, uh, and, and, and two, we will not have done the work to try to build uh, um, a, a core of support for change that could have been built during the small area planning process, but I don't think was. And that um, that's, I think, one of the other reasons to preserving the purpose of guiding the commission in what we ask for, demand, seek to work with the city on doing that sort of stuff. I mean, the, you know, the truth is these, I mean, set aside the community center and library survey, that the survey that was done for the comp plan was really good stuff and that report was really good. I do not want to relitigate what the outcome was, but that 
that stuff has guided me for the last two years, right? I mean, uh, the first term. And so it, it does serve a, 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 an internal purpose too. I mean, um, so uh, it works with the ANC this well, well, this is. I, our, I mean, what is the survey is to guide the community, convince them to do something that maybe they have other views about. I mean, that's is the survey to hear from the community, or is the survey to try and tell the community they should be supporting upzoning, private development, and density increase? Well, there are other options. In that. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are other options. So, so you're drawn like that. You know the answer you want, and I don't think that that's a fair way to say what the what the range of options. Well, that's what I'm trying to understand. So okay. To we, we, this so community our, wait, 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 wait. We don't, we don't, look, the truth is we don't know. We don't know, we don't know what, how, how to do this survey. We don't know whether the city will take it seriously, but the notion of not acting is, is not nuts. Act. I mean, it, it does, you know, I mean. That's not what I said. Yeah, yeah. That's not at all what I said. Yeah. It, I think it would be helpful to know, Suzanne, if, if you know from your experience uh, what, Leave our survey document. What does DEMPED do with their survey? Do they use the information and incorporate it into the selection criteria for, for the RFP, or do they provide the survey to the respondents and let the respondents decide what to incorporate in their proposal? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, what yes. do they do? <laughs> Well, it, it's sort of the no, point to, question. to the question I, that Mara was asking is that what's the point of the survey? I mean, it may be that the survey just is included with the RFP and the respondents realize the more they are consistent with what the community wants, the more likely they are to get selected. And, well, and it's just yeah, that that's way. what I would say. I What I've seen is that uh, they, they take the ANC and the community sentiment seriously in forming the RFP. Now, whether that's from a survey alone or from other channels going in, um, I've seen things stalled. I've seen things move forward quickly. I've seen things, you know, in different parts of the city, it works a little differently. Um, I'm working on a project right now at 14th and U where it just reached a stalemate for many, many months because there was a problem with community support and the politics of it. Okay, so so however the mechanics work, the community's opinions and preferences impact the especially it can slow it up. It can, can stop especially, it until it's resolved. Especially if channel through an agency. One data point we have is the community center library in 2019. When we did that study on community center and what ought to be included in it, we had a long report adopted by the commission, and that became an addendum to the RFP. It was actually attached to the RFP. And I think we could probably say something. Yeah, and Absolutely. I've seen the form zoning adjustment really insist that the ANC be present and voice its views and take it with great weight. As a matter of fact, they keep repeating it, we take it with great weight. So that's what I've seen. In terms of your quest, your specific question about what does the survey mean, I think they take all the data they, they can get politically and otherwise. Um, and um, I, I also just want to say, since I have the board, um, may not just be a paper survey, especially if we get a really good um, analysis of community sentiment. It may be other methods that, that are used beyond just having people for, fill out a survey because that could skew the results also. A lot of people won't, won't fill out a survey. That could skew everything. What, what, are, the, what are other methods? Well, one project I worked on, they literally, like, literally staffed booths around the community and on weekends literally talk to people and, and had focus groups and things like that. And you can come up with some pretty good stats if you really get a good statistical um, survey of the number of people who live there and the broad range of views and so forth. So I, I wouldn't say it would just be a paper survey. I would say there would be other things brought in from it. Yeah. 
And that, that's sense. why I'm thinking about back to where we started, thinking about how this charrette or workshop, right. whatever it is, works, and, and what the report out of that is. is uh, I throw out one more monkey wrench that I don't know how to deal with uh, in the comp plan survey that John refers to. Uh, it was one of the most important things to the community was where their car lives. And dead last was where was whether or not affordable housing happens in the neighborhood. So if there's a survey and those are the results, what do you do with that information? I think what, uh, and we'll, we'll come to that when we, when we get results. But I think the truth is that one of the things that has not been done yet fully is to one gauge is to gauge this community's um, willingness to accept change, including affordable housing. And I think one of the things that, um, and, that, and that's on what's happening in the community and on the side of the city, I think the city has accepted the idea that, you know, we're an older community and there's gonna have to be parking. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, and so I, I think that we're at, there's gonna have to be change on both sides to, to, to actually get something to the ground. So forget the parking uh, part, that was sort of a throwaway. Well, when pretty, affordable, pretty when affordable, pretty affordable housing is the lowest of priority in the community. That comes out of the uh, uh, of the survey, which it is sort of likely to, uh, uh, I think. Maybe that depends, depends how the survey is written. You know, what do you do with that information? Well, let me turn it back to you. Let's say uh, uh, that's the community's view. What, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, to getting affordable housing done in this community. What do I think is going to happen? I mean, so the, let's say the community just says, we're dead set against this. Um, how, how else would you approach this but to try to figure out how, where the community is on this and, and to say, realistically, we have a great deal of pressure from the city to do something. We need to be a good partner with the city, but we also need to represent this community. No, I'm not I, sure. I think this process that you're talking about is yeah. a good way to start to judge it. I'm just concerned with uh, the outcome. It's, 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 <laughs> maybe it's, well, the outcome no, it's, it's yeah. noteworthy that at the meeting at the church about surplusing, although the vast majority of people were opposed to surplusing, the vast majority of people were in support of affordable housing. So people who opposed surplusing, handing over to private developers, were not saying that they were against affordable housing. And, and I, I think that there's been a lot of consciousness shift in this community. And I also think that's something else to be done. Like, what, you know, to my initial question, when you say affordable housing, what do you mean? People don't know what that means. We don't know what that means just technically in terms of size and scope. But people don't know what that means. And, and even when we're talking about here, when developers do affordable housing, which we've all talked about, you know, little single rooms don't do it. It needs yeah. to be family, affordable housing. That can also have green should, space. But, but doing a meeting on social housing and <laughs> giving information to the community, ask, wouldn't yeah. that be oh, good? Wait, wait, wait. I just want to say, I do think that is part of the issue is designing a survey that actually gets the information that you're looking for about how people feel, and then you deal with the results. And I can't tell you, I don't yeah. think it's productive at this point to try to figure out what are we going to do? What if they say this? And what if they say that? You do the survey, and then you figure out what to do. But um, I do think and you just, as long as the survey matters. is designed right to give you the information that you're looking for. But people won't know when they're answering it. They're answering a survey that says affordable housing, they don't know what right. they're talking so you're, about. This is going to work on the survey. I mean, honestly, I mean, you're, you're asking us questions as if we've got like paper or like. No, but these about. are ideas to think about. You yeah. can do educationals and we can yeah, also yeah. be clear okay. what affordable housing yeah. is. And, yeah. what yeah. and, yeah. and, and AMC has been doing that. that. I, mean, we, I mean, if you go back to Commissioner Chang and some of the work that um, the ANC did under the last um, commission, we've been doing a lot of educating and we will continue to do that. But you um, could do a big program on social housing. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. We can do yeah. also community land trust. So, yes, that's so true. bringing it back to your schedule. Thank you. <laughs> that's right. <Ryan. laughs> as one of the, not, no disrespect or anything, but as one of the people on the survey group, I'm happy to work with like what Jim said about how you write the survey is really important. Uh, I can share the experience we had with the comp plan and everybody, one was on that group and Randy too, and everybody commented on the survey that Jerry put together and 
Jerry is a statistician, and that's mm -hmm. what he does. And it worked well. We got a robust response. I think we had 600 million people, which is a huge response. Um, so it, it totally can be done, and I'm happy to work. I, I don't know who the chair is. Sorry, I don't know who the chair is. Is that in this or in this cargo? Uh, yeah, uh, Rasheen is online, um, uh, but uh, Hello, so we're, we're, we're really going <laughs> we're, we're to really be pushing you to come to these meetings in person. And Robert Gordon, who's about to leave, is going to lobby you personally on that subject. Hey, Robert. Uh, Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Robert. Thanks. See you guys. Okay. Thanks, Robert. Um, uh, and the, the last thing, yes. well, I had to talk about 10 yes. seconds, is I think part of the problem with the community and affordable housing is exactly what everybody's saying. No one knows that. And I've been banging the drum about, like, I call it civic realm workers. So people who already work here, who can't afford to live here, librarians, people who work in the community centers, teachers who commute two hours to Lafayette, or all the schools around here. I think if you said to this community, we want to build housing for those people who work here already, you would get a lot of support for that. Thank you. Um, Rather than, uh, I mean, go through uh, the finances issue. Um, I mean, I, I mean yeah, Randy really. has been saying for for as long as I can remember, how the hell are we going to pay for this? Um, so I think that the question of yeah. Before we jump into a next one, I know there's some comments on Zoom. Maybe we could just do a run through if there are questions. Yeah, I was going to suggest that I'm at the end of this, that we ask people if they have questions or we would review. Or maybe I'm after ask the them to topic. raise their hands okay. if they have. Uh, so are you, are you going to? Are you going to curate the, the question? Yeah, it's not, it's not much on there. Um, there one of the things uh, talked about from Robin Diner, considering Catholic University architecture students to help lead, um, they definitely noted difficulty to hear mm -hmm. University of Maryland. <laughs> and just to let folks know, we have some people in the room, it, it's probably going to be difficult to hear until we get a better setup. Because some people are still wearing masks, so um, keep that in mind. Um, I think this is the answer. They talked about the Safeway Wells Fargo. Um, and, and this one from Elizabeth, she says, now you're also talking about adding Safeway, the gas station, and Wells Fargo? What? <laughs> she said, why wouldn't a more appropriate site indeed, obvious, be along Connecticut Avenue where housing would fit in with existing condo and apartment buildings? Where, where, oh, where, 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 where is that? Yeah, where, where, yeah. way down. Um, what is the point of a survey if the important issues are settled? Um, that's if also from the issues are what? Set, are settled are settled. Um, Robin says she can volunteer the Library Renaissance Project to work with the ANC and Friends of Chevy Chase Library um, to present examples of libraries of, of the size um, DCP, CPL deserve, um, desires. Lisa, that was Robin Diner. Diner. And we'll save this chat and it'll be posted on the internet. Um, so Rasheen asks, are we going to decide the composition of the committees tonight? And I think they pretty much are, Rasheen, right, Peter? I, I think we did. You've yeah. gotten a memo from me. It's in a memo, Peter sent. Yeah. Got, yeah, I got it. Okay, so that's settled. No. Yeah. Well, well unless any you start, start uh, Yeah, no. change it. Okay. No, I'm fine with that. Thanks. And um, nobody with raised hands. Okay, so let me just suggest. Uh, yeah. Um, let me just suggest. Um, uh, I, I think finances. Yeah, you want to say something, Randy? Yeah. But do speak up so these people can hear. It's about timing more than anything else. Yeah. On this, because we're getting into budget season. Yeah. We already are in budget season. The mayor has already prepared most of the budget. I think. Uh, currently, there is seventeen point five million dollars for the community center and twenty four point two million dollars. For the library, and and those are what's the second spent, figure? What's the second figure? Twenty four point two million. That's so for the community center rating. That's the library. Oh, okay. that's okay. assuming just building them, not putting development. Right. Uh, that's that's currently what's in the, the capital budget. No, that doesn't assume. 
It doesn't assume anything. Assume anything. It doesn't yeah. assume anything. It's just a number. It's just the numbers. And those numbers, as far as I can tell, have always been just plucked out of the air. They don't have any basis in fact. I can tell you too that when we were looking at this in 2019, 2020, and we actually put in our RFP, got an architect, had a, a preliminary design even, and the architect came back and said, you don't have enough money. And they said uh, it was going to cost more like 30 million instead of 17 and a half million. So even back then, it was too little. And since then, there's been inflation and costs are much higher now than they were in 2019. So we've got to get, get on the ball quickly to the council. And if the mayor doesn't put more money in here, and I doubt she will, uh, to make sure that there's going to be enough money for the community center and the library parking, I think that's the responsibility of the city and it's not, should, shouldn't be subsidized from housing, open space, all of those things the city needs to pay for, and they need to come up with enough money to do that. And we need to talk to Janice and to Matt to make sure that they're going to be pushing that. Yeah, yeah. I know, I've talked to them yeah. as well. But, but Randy, I think that this is precisely what, I mean, your group ought to get together yeah, and you ought to start doing the lobbying. I, I'm I, saying I we, we got to do that. Right off. Right off. And, yeah, and that's you know, fine. The, the budget hearings are going to start at the beginning of of uh, April, and so we got to, we've got to be ready for that. I don't I don't want to get into the minutia here, but just so I understand this, if there's forty one point seven million dollars in the capital budget mm -hmm. now, that's not forty one. Yeah, forty one. Yeah, forty one point seven. I hope I did the other one. Um, you know, uh, capital budgets get updated, don't they? I mean, and, and this they is a project that clearly is going to take several several cycles of budget hearing, right? Yes. But we don't get it this time. Is that like the kiss of death? No, not, no, no. But uh, there needs to be an understanding at the beginning that this is not going to not be this is not here. when it when it RFP goes out that the understanding has to be the city is going to pay for this. And the developer has to come up with the money for this. So as important as a dollar amount is commitment to uh, the two institutions, open space and park. Yes. Okay. Can, can I ask a question? I mean, I'm confused because at the last meeting we were talking about whether we should approve surfacing or not, whether the NC should approve surfacing or not. And the idea of surfacing is that there's an RFP from a for profit development to come in and to do what they did at West End. They would pay for the like, what they would get to build luxury condos on top. No, no, but it's not that's that's what we, we, now we, And now what I heard was. Um, no, it's going to be 100% affordable. So is the RFP going out for no self-esteem or self-esteem? Wait, 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 Okay, but it does seem but to me the there are two questions. Are two questions. No, no, let me finish. The surplusing has nothing to do with whether or not this goes to a nonprofit developer or a for profit developer. The surplusing will still have to move forward. But they push the surplusing off. So and, 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 and the other thing is, I'm not sure the RFP has, I mean, we need the money. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure why, you know, the, we need a commitment from the city to fund a new library and a new community center the necessary parking and open space, whether it's built as one building, two buildings, no housing on that site, but on, a, on an adjacent, however it's done. What I think Randy is saying is, look, we know the dollar sign in the mayor's is too small. It's yeah. too small. And we need to say that to them now, right. even if you know the additional money comes in further cycles that they go in knowing that's what you're saying, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, those, and numbers, I think, those numbers would be too small, even if you thought the numbers were okay, because they're 2018 numbers. Right. Construction's probably gone up 17, 18 percent, 20 percent since then. Yeah. Uh, so even if you don't put more money in, those numbers need to be increased by 20 percent. Johnson, did you get your question answered? Not really. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. What, I mean, what, 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 I mean, 
whatever goes there, other than these public facilities and the ancillary, I mean, whatever goes there, we need the money for the public facilities and the ancillary things. It seems to me that the first question that, that, is, that, that uh, Randy is asking is the, the first thing he's saying, the thing he's saying right now is we've got to tell the mayor um, to they budget have to more fund money that. or that yeah. we're not satisfied. I agree with Randy, he's 100% okay. right. Okay. What I'm confused about is what DEMPED thinks this RFP is going to say, because everybody I talk to who knows much more about this than I do is that there's no way any for-profit developer is going to come in, even if you give them $40 million and build a library and build a community center without putting for-profit housing. But th that seems to be the other prong of this. How the hell do you pay for the that's for the and, and hopefully answer your question. I don't know what the R or what DIMPAD is going to put in the RFP. I right. mean, I don't know if any of us do. Right. In, in, in terms of that, what we're trying to do is at least influence what they put in the Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. That's yeah. what we're trying to do. <laughs> we don't really know. We're trying to get all this done to so influence I, I, that. <laughs> But let me just go back. Randy, um, I know you've been talking with um, Janice and um, Councilmember Fruman. From what I understand, I know Janice put in her draft letter about um, additional funding for the site. Um, I looked at Councilmember Fruman's draft letter. He didn't put that in the letter. And I emailed him, are you going to add this to your letter? And he said, OK, is he going to add that in? Because his reply to me was, he was going to bring it up like in a separate process. Yeah, I suggested that as well. I yeah. Included, but I don't agree with did, did, okay. did he mention parking? I, I yes. thought he said he was he going did. to say yeah. it. it, 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 it yeah. Okay. Well, look, I, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. I don't think we can settle it here, but I no, think no. You know, we need to, yeah. We, you're right. We need to press and it fast. What I'm saying is the agency needs to have testimony. Oh, at, absolutely. At the yeah. um, budget hearings, as we've done many, many times. Absolutely. Before. To make sure that the council is aware of the, this crucial part of this project. If we don't get enough money for the community center library parking and open space from the city, there's going to be, there's going to, they're going to try to bleed over from the That's right. And that, that will never work. There's right. some testimony we should, we should have had out there already. Yeah. So why do you work with your group and suggest <laughs> testimony? <laughs> That's, you know, suggest the know. testimony. Yes. The, you know, I mean, that's a, yeah. and, and Randy, one more time, you think. Uh, a general number would be thirty million or more. Is that right? I have no idea. If if but if you had to testify, the ANC were to testify. To... I, we're never going to know that until yeah. we get proposal. Right. So you would frame it as enough to achieve right. yeah. X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And considering all these other surrounding. I mean, we tried we tried to do that with the community center, and the architect came back and told us we don't have enough money. So the only way we're going to actually be able to know. What it's going to cost is if it gives you a proposal. Yeah. And that's the RFP process. You get put out the RFP, and that's when we're going to have to inevitably going to have to change that capital budget over time. Right. And just to clarify, we don't have an official response from DIMPED after the surplus resolution. Is that right? Right. Correct. Disappoint. Disappoint. That's correct. But not not official. official. No. He said official. official. Yeah. No. No. But they, they are supposed to respond. Do we they, know, they will respond. Do we have an idea of when? No. Can I throw another thing in finance? Uh, uh, yeah. It's just sort of it's related to the Wells Fargo discussion. Uh, uh, but it was just a thought I had this afternoon that if, if another ask for Wells Fargo, asking for their property might be a bit of a stretch. But how about asking them for a big donation? To support black home ownership so that uh, the affordable housing that gets done on this site maybe is condominiums. And Wells Fargo sets up some sort of fund to help uh, uh, people afford to, to buy those. That would be uh, uh, a cool thing. And, uh, you know, so they'd be helping people who. Need the affordable units to uh, afford to move to. Uh, well, but that sounds previous. like that sounds like higher price, non affordable units, such that they need the largesse of the bank to help them pay some higher market rate per unit. When in or, fact, they could build actual affordable or, or it's a matter of getting more 
deeply uh, of uh, more deep affordability in uh, wealth building ownership situations. So, I mean, I'm not sure. This is not my area of expertise, yeah. but it just seems to me that that might be an appropriate thing for a bank to do. Uh, 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 to uh, okay. in this neighborhood. Uh, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves here, but I do think that one of the things you're raising here is that this whole effort uh, is both aimed at the community, I think, and trying to figure out, gauge where the community is and what it's, what it's, what arguments it's open to in terms of accepting change. But the other thing is we, it, it's trying to cope with what is really real and we have to accept is substantial pressure from the city. And one of the things we're hearing from the city about the city is that they're really interested in doing something about home ownership, um, you know. And so, I mean, we this is going to be a this is a diff, you know a difficult political issue that we're going to have to deal with of sort of how you know what what can we do to to bring them towards us, the city towards us? Can we find the support in this community and a proposal to, you know that that brings these two things together? This is all something for the future, but it is. It, we have to be realistic about this, that um, the city, but particularly with regard to the community center library, owns the property and it's going to, you know, we're going, we're at the same time we're trying to forward a, a real community process, we're also trying to be sure that we, we influence, you know, the city is attracted to joining us rather than, you know, running over us. So, um, um, let, I just want to, I, I would like to just talk about the, the resources thing for one second and then turn to the communications question because I think we need to decide about, and Lisa's already mentioned it, but um, on resources, uh, um, I, I, I think, Sue, I hope to work with Susan to, to help each of these groups and to first and foremost start talk, to find out about LINK or other group, uh, uh, facilitators and um, and survey expertise that we can bring to this community and understand cost. Um, uh, and uh, and um, I, I, you know, I hope that you'll let each of us work with your groups to, to, um, to try to figure out what, how best to supplement them with in, independent third party expertise that would let us do this and do it well fast. Um, so that's what the resources thing is. And I think also we're, we will be working on exploring the, the again, the Wells Fargo and other sites. If they're, if they're pie in the sky, if there's something that might develop 10 years from now, it's not good enough. Now we, we face, you know, there is a substantial need for affordable housing. We're under substantial pressure from the city. Um, uh, we need to find, we are under substantial pressure from the community and we need to find if there is a, uh, a, a, a way to bring these things together. And if Wells Fargo is not it, it's not it. Let's face facts and move on, you know, so. Uh, um, can I turn to communications? Um, and Lisa, you started talking about it, but why, I mean, we've seen just in the last few days, uh, an immense, just how much um, fear and, uh, and anger there is around the issues this group has to deal with. The truth is that for much of the first few years of our commission, we've tried to keep our heads down and plow forward. And I think that we have to face the fact that as we start trying to move a community process forward, we're going to need to do better communications. And um, and um, so I'm open to suggestions about how. Um, I don't think engaging in tit for tat answers. No, no, no. That's right. It, you know, gets us very far. Um, so, um, um, but but you know, you may think otherwise. Um, um, I mean, um, some of you, Jim is a classic example, has answered some of the issues raised by uh, members of the community. Um, and there's some back and forth, but I, I mean, you wanna talk about some of the ideas you have for that? Um, so very well said, Peter. Um, and that's something that the ANC has, I think struggled with <laughs> from term to term and not unlike other government agencies I've talked with council member staff, um, you know, I just think the COVID situation they're in and the community we're in, there's always a desire for a lot of information. And what's the best way to get that to the community where they're hearing 
from us as opposed to some of the things you see over the listserv that might not be factual or might be fear mongering um, to let or, them or know. Hmm? And to, and, and to be generous to these people, it might be real fear too. I oh, mean, well, there know. is. But I mean, you, you have all of it. I mean, it, when you're trying to introduce change on this level um, and not even this level, change in and of itself is a fearful process for many people. Um, so one of the things that I talked to Peter about, um, and I'm curious to see what the group thinks, is I want to open up this group to the community because there's the last thing I saw on the listserv, which I did not read, and will not read, <laughs> but somebody gave me the hard copy is about you guys, you know, about who you guys are, what positions you have. Personally, well, I'd be interested to read. Oh, <laughs> don't. <laughs> Personally, I come from um, a background of government. I come from a background of um, doing hard, you know, very uh, hard, um, charging type projects with different groups, different interests. I've never worked on a project where everybody had my point of view, never. I've supervised at an SES level. I never supervised staff that all said, Lisa, you're hundred percent right. So I'm used to working with people of different opinions and I wanted this group to be diverse in your opinion and thought. I didn't care that I had for-profit developers. I didn't care if it was nonprofit developers. I didn't care if it was people that didn't want housing versus people that are you know, gung-ho about affordable housing. That's how we're going to get to the best solution. Um, but not everybody in the community knows who you guys are or what we're doing. Not everybody's going to be looking at this meeting. They're going to have their own opinion. So I would kind of like to start having just sessions with the community where we just show up, we can invite them, we could advertise it, you know, in advance where we discuss what we're doing, um, who you are, let them talk to you about your interests, about your thoughts, um, ask us questions. I would like, you know, maybe DEMPED to be there to ask additional questions about the process. I just think sometimes the ANC can seem like this closed entity regardless how hard we work to try to open ourselves up. And, you know, I know there's going to be times, even if we do something like this, people are going to say, oh, well, they're still not being transparent. But um, it's a different, different mechanism that we could probably take that will not cost us a lot, um, you know, to try to work with the community and, and hear from them in a different format. I just want to say that after I've worked on the Hill for decades, I really strongly agree with everything you've said. And I think transparency is really important. I don't think anyone should resign or be kicked off the committee because they have interests. I think I learned a lot from our first meeting from Mr. Chinlin, even from people who have a lot more experience than I do. I do too. But I do think transparency is really important and it might be useful for the three of you to get a disclosure from us. And so everyone writes down, it could be sort of like a Brady. Mm -hmm. not least in context where yeah. everyone writes down their relevant interest, financial interest or you know affiliation with groups and discloses it in writing so you all have it and so that we're transparent about what our background is. Obviously that's easier for me because I don't have any ties to anybody in real estate. I represent victims of domestic violence and human trafficking and no like no tether at all to anybody involved in real estate. So for me, it would be easy. It's harder for some of the others who have more things that perhaps they might not want to put in the public disclosure. But I think it's really important to be transparent and establish trust because I read those lists are supposed to be really troubling. Yeah. If I, if I just say something, I'm, I'm just slightly wary about this, not about your general idea, but I do think once you start asking people, like, it's in, I, I don't, I will tell everybody, every organization I've ever joined, but I do feel a little offended by that oh, yeah. because I do feel a little bit like, I have my beliefs. And what about people who don't join organizations but have the same beliefs? I just don't feel it's, I certainly think anybody who has any potential financial interest in anything we should talk about absolutely has an obligation, moral, I don't know, or the legal to disclose that. Yeah. Definitely. Beyond that, I, it's hard for me to see how you do this. And you say, well, does everybody who thinks there shouldn't be affordable housing, do you have to now say that to this group and well, to the or what does it mean there should be? Well, I'm just saying, I, I don't know where you draw those lines, and I just feel like that's a I, weird I, I, thing. I, I, just, 
to, 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 to Jim's point, I mean, one of the, one of the, um, in, 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 in a very prominent uh, 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 Mr. Post, um, one of the criteria for leaving the committee was whether you were for or against a historic district. That, that is, I, I mean, that seemed kind of inappropriate. I mean, like, um, you know, I mean, uh, it just seems like an inappropriate question. You know, I just, you know, I mean, uh, so I just, I, I, my worry about, you know, asking you for lists. I, look, I asked you all. I, I asked you all. Yeah, financial. Right? If you have, if you have a financial, financial conflict, let let us know. You know, and let us know prominently and now. You know, um, so but but I think that affiliations and um, and professions um, uh, that you know, I mean, Ron is a developer. Ron has said he has no financial interest here and will not have. Good enough for me. I mean, it was not going to be good enough for some people. Um, Jim is against historic district. Do we exclude yeah. him? I mean, you know, I'm, you know, I'm. I just think it's not. So, I, a, a list of affiliations troubles me because. And then, of to, course, if you're going to exclude people against, you do exclude the people who are for. And you know, I mean, this it just doesn't seem like that's gonna, that's the right direction. Hold it, I'm just trying to get the committee first. We're good. So, it's a bit of the elephant in the room, but I. This is my personal view, and also it's the view of many, many people I spoke to who I did. With Agnieszka, we did the following. I walked around this neighborhood and we got hundreds of hundreds of signatures. This is on small area plan. Yes, on yeah. small area plan. But also, I spoke to and lots of people come to me because of the, the comp plan. I didn't ask to be on either committee. I was asked to be on the committee and I'm happy to do it because I live in the community. But I have to say, the ANC has lost, well, first off, a lot of people in DC, and it's not just this area, plus mm -hmm. DC are very suspicious of the relationship with the mayor and development. And, and there's a huge amount of distrust there. Mm -hmm. That this isn't about affordable housing at all. It's about funding money to friends of the mayor. I mean, that's just what a lot of people believe. And there's maybe some merit to it. Then the second thing is the ANC, Jerry Mallets, who did an awesome job, and Randy was involved, Ron was involved, we do the survey. We hear what people think, and then the perception is it's ignored. And the ANC, and I'm not criticizing anybody in particular, but the ANC goes along with whatever the mayor wants. And that's that's created this distrust in the community. And I agree with everybody. It's like, no, you can't be put off the community, this committee, just because you had a view on XYZ. But it goes to Lisa's point. We have to be completely transparent. Okay, but and think, we and we have to when when the community comes back and says this is what we want, we have to. The, I firmly believe the ANC should reflect what the community is saying and to send that message to the to the government. And they can either ignore us or they can go along with us. But the the role in the past, which has created this level of distrust, is. The perception is that the ANC isn't doing that. And I'm not suggesting that's going to be the true or true going forward, but I'm just saying that's where people come. So let me just say, uh, you're known by your acts. And so our first act and this uh, current drama and the issue we're talking about is we said no to yeah. the city when the city wanted a yes. And I think that had a long and uh, I mean, I, I just, I think that um, we have just said, we've just described a process that we're going to pursue as a community that I think it's fair to say, I, it may well happen that the city joins us in this process, but right now, if they had their brothers, if the mayor had her brothers, if Pachikio had his brothers, we wouldn't do this, right? Mm -hmm. We wouldn't do it. It gets in the way of them, Absolutely. you know? And um, so I think our best answer, I mean, is not a list of uh, every affiliation we've ever had. Our best answer is our acts. And I understand that in the course of doing that, there are going to be times when either where we don't look like we're like in opposition, right? I mean, the fact is we're, we are in a very complicated political situation and that there are going to be times where we're going to have to work with the city. We want to work with the city. We'd like them to come work with us. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there are going to be times when people have doubts, but we're known by our acts and we ought to, um, 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 you know, if we do it right and we make ourselves available to people, um, you know, so that they can, they can say, I think I, you know, I think you're on the take. You know, I mean, look, I mean, I'm having coffee tomorrow with Carol, who started all this. You know, 
I want to hear what you know, I want to hear, you know, and I want to, I, I'm not going to try to confront. I just, I want to understand that, you know, those views. I, you know, I think that all of us doing that would help this process. Peter, you have, you know, since you've been on the commission, you've talked about, you know, more community engagement ideas. I think the idea of getting out there and talking with folks is a great one. Um, I plan to set up some time to just sit out and have people come and talk if they'd like to. If anybody else would like to join, happy to have you. I think Lisa, your idea of uh, the, the committee coming uh, for a group and having people informally ask questions is all good. Um, so I, yeah, and I think um, keeping up the positive communication is, is really important. There's certainly gonna be negative communication that comes across. Uh, you all are volunteers in this, so you are clearly plugged in with your community. You've done stuff before, so reaching out to your networks and the people that you know is going to be really helpful. Uh, so there's all all good things, and yeah, uh, keep that up. I know I know this is terrible because the, the, I mean I'm asking everybody and uh, asking myself too that we move fast on all these working groups. But just what if I set up a something at the Lafayette Rec Center? A Wi Fi work. Oh, yeah, well, okay, we're going to do it. We're, 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 yeah. But, you know, there's a coffee class, a coffee class a week from now or <laughs> 10 days from now. Um, would a lot of you come? Sure. Um, these are going to be people who say, you know, what about this and what about that? We answer them. I mean, yeah. we, sure. you answer your, for yourself. I mean, you're not, you're not going to make everyone happy. You're not going to as, as, as the target of a lot of this crap, uh, and it is crap. Uh, I will, I would just say that I totally agree that transparency is great. I think coffee clutches are great. Uh, I think actions are super important. Mm -hmm. But with certain factions that are out there, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. well, I've that? been hearing this for, what, four years now. At least. And... Honestly, if anybody can point to one action, one recommendation, one thing I've ever contributed in this that would have me be guilty of what I'm accused of, I'd like to see it. So it, I'm just saying I wouldn't hold my breath that actions are going to change the well, junk that happens on the list. But I'm totally with you. Let's do it. Let's go have coffee and chat with everybody. Can I just raise one other thing? Just, just, this is just a more, slightly more philosophical concept. I think a coffee patch is great if I'm in town. I'd be happy to come. I'm going out of town for a few days. But, um, and the, your general idea is good. I'm all for it. I think the real problem, to me, the real problem is at, uh, that people, you know, have, are busy. They got a lot of other things yes. in their minds. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody's talking about something and if it doesn't reach their consciousness and they don't realize the impact on them, they just aren't going to pay attention. 100%. And then mm -hmm. it gets much closer and they say, wait a minute, why hasn't anybody told me about exactly. this? Yeah. And I think that the challenge is how to break through that. And I, but I don't have answers for it. Yeah. And, and I just coffee patch is fine, but you're going to tend to attract yeah. the people who already exactly. are tuned in to it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's how to get beyond that. And, but but this know, is like, as a commissioner, this is like a perennial issue. You know, yeah, you, know you talk for a long time and, it, you know, and then, you know, actually we get down to cases and something's going to happen. And, you know, it, then you have to redouble the effort. But I mean, you know, but I, 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 there's, there's no easy answer to this. Uh, yeah. I just think that <laughs> making the effort is important. I think it goes a long way. Yeah. Yeah. I, think I agree, but can I just say that to rebuild trust with the community. Like, I don't want my neighbors to think I'm on a secret cabal. I like my neighbors. <laughs> and I think it's important to have openness and transparency. I'm certainly not suggesting that people say, here's my position on the whatever historic district, to which I don't have a position one way or the other. And I don't know enough about it to say. But I think just having a basic disclosure yes. of what's, what my job is, do I have any connections to developers in the real estate industry or, and, you know, maybe we could come up with a little list. I don't want to be like Norm Eisen and have checkbox and over litigate it. I think I trust everyone to disclose what ought to be disclosed and what a reasonable person would want to know. And I'm not suggesting anyone should be knocked off, but I think it would go a long way to establish trust and openness 
and transparency if that list was available and you could hold it and that way i mean it protects everybody because then it's clear who's on the committee and what our backgrounds are and i'm not suggesting anyone gets knocked off but i just think transparency is important one thing i was also going to is those who have a direct line to the dc government is these opz and dinpet they have to do a much better job of selling whatever their vision is absolutely mm -hmm. they, they should be coming to the community and they should be saying X, Y, Z, and and why, and they should be saying things like, "Yeah, there's going to be a hundred units, and only ten of them are affordable." And then people could say, "Well, actually, we don't like that. We want more." Or they can say, "There's going." To... Yeah. They, no, the problem is, no one knows, and this has been true for the four years I've been involved in this. What is going to happen? And I think views would be so different if we said there's going to be affordable units on the Wells Fargo lot, and they're gonna to be townhomes, family size, three bedrooms, with a one yard where people who work in the community can live, is really different from saying you have to give up your one playground and it's gonna be luxury housing and some affordable, right? Those are two very different things. And I think the answer to the survey will change depending on what the community is presented with. Well, but hold it, just so we understand this, we don't, this we don't group, control this, that. this group, well, it's not only going to control it. What I think the task we're taking on is, to try to get answers to these things, uh, uh, you know, answers for what the community is looking for, but also answers from that we're trying to be able to influence the process for, and, and, and among other things, explore whether Wells Fargo or any other site. You so know, I'm just saying it's just not yeah. in a vacuum. Like it's yeah. hard to ask, like, are you for affordable housing? Like yeah. I would hope everybody is for affordable housing and for inclusive, you know, home ownership from yeah. underrepresented communities. But if it's packaged in, you have to give up playground, you have to go to the library, and I mean, then you might get a different answer. Well, that's why it's a very tricky process for how we move forward. I mean, it just, but that's what we got in front of us, you know. I mean, it's, uh, but you we know. also have to be careful who we listen to, because no one said that. Right. All right. The people who have said that are making assumptions on false, yes, uh, on, on, from on, 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 on things process. coming from ignorance. Yeah, so, you know, you know, there is a prevailing sentiment. Audience? Who said this committee? It's like, why are you on the committee? It's not going to make any difference. Why am I? No, no. Why are you on It's like, why are you doing this? Well, it's a waste I, of time. And, and that, but that's a sentiment that I the look. DC government needs to disabuse, or they can clarify. Yes. Well, I think I think we're we're not in disagreement that OP, you know, that their communication skills have been, uh, uh, you know, lacking, and, uh, and and that's been a problem. Okay. So I, 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 I uh, move to adopt your lists. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, I move to adopt the list I, on communications. I think that what I'm hearing from people is that that we will try coffee. Uh, look, I, I mean, I'm happy to take us. And Jim, I guess I'll use you as the uh, as the arbiter on this. If 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 we just simply uh, 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 either one of the two, either or both of these. Um, we each just made a statement that we'll post on the on the the this task force's uh, this uh, committee's uh, spot on the web the ANC website that says you know I don't have any conflicts or anything. You know, well, what did um, we do with Marin? Didn't we have? I you know I think Jim's point on this is. Well, wait a minute. Hang on, Peter. Sure. Randy, what did, what did we do with Marin on our website? Uh, what each person, each of the commissioners. And whether they had any relationship with Murray or ECC or anything else. Because we've gone through this kind of before yeah. with Murray. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, mean, I say something on this? Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been thinking about this uh, not just here, but, but beforehand too. Uh, we're, we're volunteers, elected volunteers, and we created this committee. And we have trust in you, and we really appreciate the help that you're giving us. Uh, I think if we understood that any of you had financial interests in that civic core, we wouldn't want you on the committee and we would figure that out at the ANC. I don't think it's on you all to respond to some of this rancor that has built up with a handful of people and say why you have volunteered to help your community and the ANC. I think we should have your backs on that. We do. And um, again, as you said, if someone does have financial interests, right. now would be the time, but we don't think you do. And so you are volunteers helping volunteers, trying to help the community. I, 
I don't think we need to, I don't think it, we need to respond uh, by divulging all, all sorts of background interests. Uh, anybody could have signed up to this committee. Anybody could have signed up to be an ANC and run to get elected. And so and I, and I let's say, keep that in perspective. And I, and, I, that, and I feel sort of strongly about that because we also need to make this process uh, one that is not so miserable that people never <laughs> sign up again. Uh, and you right. do not have to do that. But, <laughs> you know, that, but, but I mean, I would second that, but I also like to say, you know, to Jim's excellent post, or, uh, today, if I were a different kind of developer, if I absolutely believed that the only uh, sensible thing for the city to do was to build IZ market rate luxury units on this site or any other site in here, I would still, but I was interested in, in the process, I would still deserve to sit on this committee and not have to be removed because I felt differently about how development happens than John does or Mara. But I think the, I think the only way or, where I think you should be removed if you were to say to us, I intend to bid on that. Oh, totally. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, that, you, I mean, that's, that's, and that's, that's the only conflict of interest. Yeah. Lot of just a yeah, head that's that's my head. Yeah, yeah. So, I, don't, I but, mean, that's it. But to yeah. warn people off just because they don't agree with you. Yeah, yeah. 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 we're not even entertaining. I agree to that. And that's just to Peter's point. I mean, every one of you gave us a, 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 a resume and bio. So I mean, we, I mean, it's not like you're like black boxes to us, right? And uh, and we vote again. So, I mean, uh, we should take responsibility, right? So I agree with Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I don't agree with you on that. I don't defend you, but. <laughs> <laughs> we agree on that. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I just think it should be clear to the community. And this, I think, is that there's nobody here who has any financial that they know of today, any financial interest. Well, in I'm happy to look, I'm happy to write. And so that's fine. And, and that's, that's, say, that's totally. And we've talked about this and like everybody but is gonna. It's just starting to ask about all people's views about all kinds of other things. And like, I'm happy to tell people what I think about this historic district. Maybe I'll change my mind someday, but you know, that's fine. But I just kind of, I think it's a little weird to be, it seems, sounds like somebody's having a litmus test, a political litmus test before I can express my views on something else. It would be also nice if the people who have these very strong views about what people are doing to come to the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Look at my seats. I was ready to run all. Well, that's why we <laughs> in fairness to people, we need to get. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. So they can. Okay, okay. we're we're gonna we're working. Coffee is a good idea because when you're out in the community, yeah. it's just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. I I, I need to go. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I think that we're at we're at seven fifteen. Um. Uh, I will send around uh, just a note about. Uh, a rough timetable on some of this. So we begin to kind of know what we're talking about in terms of the timetable. Um, um, uh, is, is there, are there any other comments or is there any of the raised hands online before we go? Right out here. Okay, I think we're I think we're adjourned. I, 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 so thank you to the community. Thanks everybody. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Randy. I gotta save it to save I'm hanging on Good to see you all in prison. After all the emails.